Hey guys, it's Salman here, and today we are talking about Azrite Armor, the big ish character progression system in BFI. But before going any further, what exactly is Azerite Armor? Starting from the beginning, right when you start your BFI adventures, following through a series of quests, you're going to obtain a powerful necklace called the Heart of Azeroth, which basically is an artifact quality necklace granting a plethora of secondary stats like haste, mastery and critical strike that can increase in power or level much like your artifact weapon worked. So doing random heroics or BGs, quests while leveling or world quests, emissaries, the new island expeditions or just killing bosses in dungeons and so on will grant AP with varying degrees. But luckily you won't have to click an item and it's all done automatically. Over time your necklace is gonna gain levels as you get more and more AP, again much like your artifact weapon. And this is where some of the grinds will come in in BFI. Like the weapons, it starts off easy with small and nice numbers but then increases exponentially to the higher levels. A catch-up system will also be in place from the get-go. Uh, every week the power required for each level is going to be reduced by 20 to 30 percent so it doesn't get to the crazy AP values of Legion and helping with latecomers. This essentially is going to work like your artifact knowledge did at the start of Legion as well. Now why do you want to grind out uh, those levels? Well, uh, two things. One is going to make your necklace ever more powerful, so granting you a greater amount of secondary stats, which finally is your biggest source, as regular gear pales in comparison, and of course, higher item level. Uh, the other benefit is the actual Azerite armor, as the necklace is what allows you to actually use and gain its powers. How can you get it? You might wonder. Well, in the same content as regular gear, like dungeons and raids and some quests. Although on the dungeon side you can only get it from normal up to mythic, and mythic plus is only obtainable on the weekly cash not on boss drops. Why? Because Blizz loves us so much, they don't want us to grind our ass in Mythic Plus, so they were kind enough to make that decision for us. Essentially, Azerite armor at higher levels is gated by weekly lockouts. Also, Azerite armor on itself also works a little bit differently from regular gear. For one, Azerite pieces are only on the chest, shoulder and head slot at least for now. It doesn't have any sort of secondary stats, like haste or mastery, instead just primary stats but far more than any other gear piece, uh, kind of a polar opposite of the necklace, it cannot warforge or titanforge, nor get sockets for gems or minor stats like leech, and cannot even be tradable if you obtain it in a raid setting or dungeon. What makes Azerite gear interesting though is the fact that it can gain unique Azerite powers, much like the traits on the artifact or the crucible worked. Just simple powers to further improve our character. The way to obtain or unlock them is tied to your Heart of Azeroth necklace level, but also the quality, the item level and where you obtained that piece of Azerite armor. So a rare quality shoulder that I got on my warrior here that was given as a quest reward, extremely weak, something that you can expect to get when you start BFI, grants me two rings with powers to choose from. Now, those powers or traits are specifically assigned to each armor piece, so they are not randomized, and at first, it might seem that is something that you're gonna spend quite a lot of time thinking and plotting your choice, but in reality they are quite simple as they are separated by spec with a single universal option. So the power or trait that I currently have activated is the one that is based on the Fury spec called Reckless Flurry. Increasing auto attack damage and each attack reduces recklessness CD by 0.1 second. Uh, this is actually one of the not so bad traits, not overly interesting but reducing the CD of my main cooldown is gonna give me something else to think about as now I know it no longer is on that flat 1.5 minute cooldown 
but might come off cooldown a little bit earlier, so I'm gonna have to be slightly more alert on my other CDs or abilities to make proper use of it. But in the end, this was, for the most part, a brainless choice. Since I'm spec Fury and this is my main spec, this is what I'm gonna choose because the other traits like Brace for Impact here is benefiting protection for your Shield Slam to give you a buff, or Gathering Storm to benefit arms, improving Blade Storm. Even though it is technically also usable on Fury, is meant to be used with arms, and you can easily see this the other way around and make the Reckless Flurry trait worthless for arms or protection spec. But you also gain the universal trait, the so-called fourth option, and usually includes something that can be used on any spec. In the case of this armor piece, it's just a proc to grant a buff to my secondary stats, nothing too special, and I imagine this is where you're gonna enter the realm of simming to know which trait happens to be best for your specific spec, but the tendency is on the spec specific trait to be better. Those universal traits, like all others, are armor specific, so they can slightly change according to where you get them. Like my headpiece that I got from the Atal Dazar dungeon is instead of summoning a child of Razan, a little baby dino, to add a bleed to my target. Gameplay wise, still not that interesting, but a neat aesthetic aspect of this system. However, it is locked to be only usable in the Zuldazar continent, and some other traits share this kind of rule. Now that's the first ring that you get to choose from. You then get a secondary ring, where you're gonna find small utility benefits or survivability type of effects. Uh, this can include a small prides like shield, self-heal when no enemies are around, a buff to armor depending on HP levels, increasing our speed, so movement speed. So again, very small benefits, nothing that will change much of your gameplay either. And then the final trait is just a flat item level increase of 5 to that same Azerite piece. So overall, nothing too crazy, but this is the most basic Azerite piece you can find in BFI. Those can get better at higher levels levels. So epic as right here on mythic dungeons and beyond, and of course raids, will have an extra ring of traits or powers to choose from. Not only that, the higher the item level, the more it will require out of your necklace. So this is when your heart of Azeroth necklace level will come in. You can even find some of this in my headpiece that I mentioned earlier that I got from a dungeon. Currently I only have one trait activated on it. To get to that second ring, I need to reach level 5 on my necklace, so I would have to go out there and grind, or in this case, just regularly level since I'm quite low. After, I would further have to achieve level 7 to unlock the last trait, which is just that item level increase. After that's done, I have fully tapped the potential of this particular armor piece. These are global unlocks, by the way. You reach that level, you unlock the traits for any armor that shares those same levels. You're not gonna be spending AP like your weapons did. Now, on endgame gear, you're gonna find this same set of rules. On old Year, which is our first raid, you're gonna find the requirement of level 16 on your necklace to unlock the first trait, and all the way to 25 to unlock the last one on normal mode. But this will increase further with item level, so difficulty. So the heroic level would start at 16 again, but end on 28th, and mythic to a whopping level 33, which is the cap at this current point in time. Additionally, the raid universal traits is tied to the raid itself and only usable inside, which could prove quite interesting if every member decides to spec into it. For dungeons, normal mythic gear follows a similar pattern, uh, starting at 16 and ending around 23, with mythic plus gear that will increase obviously with item level to somewhat be in the same range as the raid requirements, so a 15 plus plus weekly cash loot would require the same level as the mythic rating pieces. However, there's a small difference in levels between gear slots and requirements, but you get the idea. And for reference, once you reach max level on your character, your heart of Azeroth should be hovering around the level 10 mark. So in the end, what all of this means is that you can expect to do some grinds to be able to unlock some of those traits, and over the course of the X-Pack you can expect them to increase, and personally I think that's fine. It's an MMO after all, grinding is part of it, as long as it doesn't get too crazy, plus we'll be 
reducing on a weekly basis, like I said previously, with the catch up mechanism. Now, what about the extra ring that you're gonna get on epic quality gear? Well, they are nothing special either. You get three choices again and end up being stacking buffs to one of your stats, chance to deal some extra damage, a permanent increase on some stat, or some a bit more focused on the defensive side. Again, nothing that will change your gameplay, just small upgrades to your character that just happen pretty much all of that said are they weak no not really those traits especially the class specifics can be powerful the defensives are a bit hit and miss but for the most part they can be powerful are they interesting though well i'll leave that up for you to decide personally there's very few traits that actually affect your gameplay there are some and Preach made an excellent spreadsheet explaining them all that you should check out if you haven't. You can find the link for that down below, among other sources. But most of the traits, they just there. Now, one concern you might be having is, if the powers are pretty much spec specific, what does it mean if I change spec regularly or I want to change spec for a specific fight. Well, that's where it can get a bit annoying. You can technically respec, although it's not really a viable way to do it. As at first, it is rather cheap to do, but after a few times, as in more than 10, 15 times, don't be surprised to see the cost going to the hundreds of thousands of gold. So, unless you got your bags full, and I mean really full, I highly advise against it. The cost does get halved every three days, so unless you constantly respecing, it shouldn't be too bad, you just need to make that annoying trip to respect which as hard is even more annoying the most viable way or at least the way it is intended to be used is just having multiple as right pieces or armor for each spec obviously there will be the best armor piece but if you're playing say a priest and you mean shadow you want to have an as right gear for your shadow spec and then others or other in your bag for say your holy spec for the most part, you can make the arguments that a lot of players already had multiple pieces of gear to different specs in situations in Legion and every expansion before, but if you are a casual player, you probably really didn't, so you're gonna be the hurt the most here. You technically also have the option to choose the universal traits and kinda go with that, but the viability of it doesn't really seem to be there. But overall, that covers the entire Azerite armor system. You might wonder as well if this system or feature is enough to fill the gaps that artifacts and legos left well technically it was never meant to replace them it's just a new system to progress our characters further problem here is that it doesn't do much there's very few traits that actually affect gameplay and when you compare to legion at the start not when we had all the goodies at the end it really is no comparison. There was an entirely new ability to use on the artifact, then all of these traits that yes, for the most part were passives, but some did affect your class and spec, and on top there was Legos that you had to grind at first, but also affected your gameplay in very meaningful ways. Even tier sets, which came a bit later in Nighthold and can be hit and miss at times, but also affected your gameplay and they are gone in BF5. Now here you do get a three pieces. So means three specific spec traits to choose from. And if you're lucky, you might get the most interesting version to your spec early on, if there's any. And I'm hopeful that the system might get better over time. New raids and dungeons could mean new traits or more rings, which can bring more interesting things to our characters. And the fact that there's multiple pieces of armor, it has the potential to surpass the artifact weapons of old and even the tier sets. Because remember, the customization side of the Azerite armor comes from being able to mix and match different pieces of armor, not just from wearing a single one or rather the same three all the time. As we saw before, traits customization on a single piece is pretty straightforward. So the idea here seems to be revolving on using multiple different pieces to wear. And when you think like that, it can be somewhat fun, although there will be a lot of grind involved. Even though there will most likely be a best one. So we'll see how it goes over the course of the expansion. Alright guys, 
case, that covers it all. If you have any questions, do leave them down below in the comments, and if not, just leave your opinion on what you think about this new Azrite armor system. As always, thank you for watching, remember to subscribe, like, and hit that bell icon to get more videos like this, and check out my Patreon if you wish to support the channel. Have a fantastic day everyone, and I'll see you all next time. See ya.